Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. Today, going to be a match between uh, Maru and Creator here on Glittering Ashes. Bottom left, it is Creator. Top right, we've got Maru. So it's a PVT from DreamHack Last Chance. Katowice is coming up. And maybe Maru can win it. He's never actually won a world championship before, but he's one of the four horsemen of Terran for StarCraft II. Hmm, he feels like he's top of his game right now, but he has some fairly weird losses in like BlizzCon championships and especially in TVP. So we're gonna have to see how he stacks up here to a creator, an excellent Korean Protoss player. And this probe is pretty much just scouting here on Glittering Ashes, the map that teases you with golden crystals that you cannot mine. Whew. Ash floating through the air here. Do -do 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 -do. And yeah, just uh, barracks coming up inside the main base, which is a sigh of relief for creator. No proxies from Maru today. Proxies are Maru's specialty. Very hard to hold off a proxy from Maru, that is for sure. And opening up Reaper here from Maru. All right. One Rax expand, one Gate expand. Everything is going according to plan here. Neither player is really super worried about early aggression. Because honestly, if you're worried about early aggression, then you go for the factory after the barracks instead of the expansion. You go for the cyber core before the Nexus if you're Protoss, but everything's cool. So Reaper's name here is Reverse Flash. It was me, Barry. I went to the future, depowered myself, and will be eaten by Zerglings or Adepts, just so you will never be able to truly defeat your ultimate nemesis. Wait, why did I do this? <laughs> The Reverse Flash Nemesis of Flash is definitely one of the funnier, more meme things in all of comic books, gotta say. See, Adept comes out. I, I mean, the person who wrote that assumed this would be a TVZ. No, it's not. So getting murdered by an Adept is definitely Reverse Flash's plan here. And the speed with which Reapers have is going to keep him away. And make sure he doesn't die to this Adept. Oh, unless combat drugs heal him. Combat drugs are healing him quite nicely. Ooh, enough to survive another hit. That would have killed him if not for the magic of combat drugs. Don't do drugs, kids, unless you're a reaper. How about that? That's that's how we're going to do this. Ooh, concussive shell opening. Dude, I like a little concussive shell opening from Terran in TVP. I do. It's just it's really good against stalkers that try to run away from you, and they can't because they're slow because they just got concussive shelled. Hmm, it's not like crazy... Super levels of aggression here. We've got three racks out. Sure, we're getting stim. There is a marine on the way, but I mean, this is definitely an attempt to get some damage. M broader harass. Shield battery going to help creators stay alive here. I could definitely support that. Getting a quick observer, too. Maybe worried about banshees? I mean, this is really early to be worrying about banshees. So instead, it's going to be a war prism, and we've got a robotics bay coming up, too. So two Marauders against one Adept. Marauders are going to win that fight. I love showing up here at 340 and just going to town on Creator. Ah, Protoss, you thought you could sit back and macro up forever? Well, these Marauders have something to say about that, Maru would say if he spoke English that well. And, um, yeah, this Adept is going to try to get some damage off your back, healing up. So a couple Adepts and a Stalker is actually quite possibly enough to make this thing happen, but the Concussive Slow... Uh, got it! Got the Stalker. Okay. Killing the first Stalker is nice, and then a group of Marines is cruising across here, too. See, the Marauder can slow the Adepts, but can't slow the Shades is the big problem when you're doing this against Adepts. So, <laughs> kind of hilarious to watch him do that. Hey, guess what? Ta-da! The Marines are here! Stim is done. No, it's not. That Adept's gonna die anyway. Stim is very, 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 very close to being done. It's going to show up in the game heart here. Yeah, there it is. Any second. There it is. Two stalkers. Ooh, I mean, the Marauder getting bonus damage in this situation is nice. But a little blink stalker action without any blink, actually, because we're just using a warp prism. Third base warps in in the face of this army. 
and actually has to stim away from this location. So Creator, very nicely defended there, making Colossus. Sub five minute Colossus opener here. Interesting choice from Creator. It could be Colossus Harass, where you stick a Colossus in a Warp Prism and drop it in Mineral Lines and go blah, 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 and try to kill SCVs this way. It's very strange. We haven't seen it in a while, but it can be fun. I mean, it's one of, honestly, one of the more fun things that I've seen in StarCraft is Colossus Harass. It just makes me laugh every time. And that's what it is. <laughs> All right. Well, see, look. This is what I'm talking about. Blah, 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 blah. And the broader siege tank is definitely too much to handle here. We're going to keep cruising around with the war prism. Got the observer just for scouting purposes. And Maru defending this exceptionally well. So at least you don't see it a lot. For the reasons that a good Terran player can pretty much deal with it with Siege Tanks and Marauders, as we saw there. Getting Extended Thermal Lance, though, we're definitely going to be making more Colossus here. And traditionally, having three Colossus against a Terran player makes the Terran player very upset. They have a hard time handling three Colossus going to town on their Marines and Marauders. It's just a lot of splash damage from a decent range and going to have a bad time. Siege Tanks can help with that. They do outrange Colossus even if they have Extended Thermal Lance. Also, I don't know, Vikings are pretty good in this situation, but we're making medevacs with the Starport instead, which I can definitely understand. Mobility is awesome. <laughs> Ridiculous. Second Colossus here. Third Colossus is under construction now. Extended Thermal Land's going to be kicking in here soon. Oh, kind of like what Creator's been doing here. He really rebuffed that early aggression quite nicely. He's getting into three Colossus set up. Maru, you know, is going for a big old scary drop. If he, This can be rebuffed, which it can because there's a Colossus here. Stalkers are waiting for this. He's like, I know Maru loves to drop on this side on this map. I'm going to be ready for it. Meanwhile, try to kill a Marauder, which you can't because good micro there. Dude, the Marauder count is fairly heavy on that defense. I like it a lot is in fact seven Marauders, and they're all on defense right now because these are Marines inside these medevacs. And here we go, three Stalkers can't kill these before they can unload. But Colossus burning down your landing zone is pretty brutal. There it is, yeah, that's not. Uh-uh, you're unloading one at a time or two at a time there. <laughs> and uh, your Marines are gonna get pretty crispy if they try to land in that landing zone. Fourth base warping in from Creator. And defend it with one of the Colossus here. Actually, two Colossus are here. Extended Thermal Lance is done. And Maru doing his patent in two sides of the map at the same time. Harassment. Third base is done here for Maru. He's got Siege Tanks, Marauders defending it. Going to try to push in here with a really heavy Marauder force. And maybe try to focus down the Nexus. Nah, going to straight up engage right now. And now going after the Nexus. I thought maybe that would happen. But Force Field's forcing the Marauders a little bit distance away, but he's going to force a cancel there anyway. Yeah, there's the cancel. Oh, just at the very gosh darn last second. That was insane. Maru coming in from the bottom side now. Round two of the attack. But there's a Colossus here. And there's a High Templar here. And, I mean, one Colossus against this many Marines is going to be just fine. Thank you. The Marines decide to back the heck on out because, of course, they do. Fourth base for Creator has to get restarted, which is annoying, but not as bad as losing a base entirely. Not getting any kind of a refund there. Like I said, Storm is coming in, working on more Marauders here, and Ghost Production has begun now, too. Upgrades are 1-1 one, one for the Marines and Marauders, and soon to be Ghost. We've got plus one attack for the ground units for Creator. And so far, so good, I would say, from both players. I think maro has got some nice harassment off. Creator's rebuffed most of it, though. So he's going to be fine, right? I mean, Maro just got a huge spike in income advantage because he just dropped a bunch of mules. That is the trick of TVP. Yeah, fourth base coming in here from Creator. He's got the Colossus. They're kind of split up. He's got three Colossus, but they're not all in the same pile here. And that's where that, all that damage just kind of stacks on top of each other. And Marines and Marauders really have to get on out. So going for EMP because as a good Terran player in a mid to late game TBP, it is good to have the EMP. You don't want to skip it. Snipe is good against High Templar, but everything else you kind of just want to EMP in this matchup. You can use Snipe a lot against Zerg players. But against Protoss, it's kind of like, well, it's High Templar, and it's like, uh, uh, maybe Stalkers, I guess. Not a terrible idea, but EMP is just a better option against Protoss, reducing 
the amount of HP that a ton of Protoss units have in a ball is better than doing a ton of damage to one unit for the most part. Also, EMP reduces energy. So EMPing the High Templar is pretty much as good as killing it. Most of the time. And Creator pushing up. Storms up the ramp. Pretty well dodged there by Maru. He splits. I don't think that was entirely necessary, but you know, it's fine anyway. Disruptor is now on the way from Creator. Splash damage going to be High Templar with Storm and Colossus and Disruptors. He says, why choose when I can have all of the splash damage at once? Zealot here to see if there is a fourth base coming in from Maru. There definitely is. Got a handful of Vikings out. This is not a ton of Vikings to deal with these Colossus because he knows it's not a ton of the Colossus. This is only three. So six Vikings versus three Colossus is going to be just fine. Thanks for asking. Scans on into the main base. Sees some Stargates coming in. Interesting. Tempest, I suppose. Maybe a little bit worried about Liberators. And Liberators are under production, so that makes a lot of sense. Did we get DT Blink? Mm, why do I think we got DT Blink? We don't. All right, so Fleet Beacon coming into largely for Tempest. We don't see Carriers versus Protoss. Or rather, versus Terran all that much. Carriers are pretty viable against Zerg and pretty darn viable against Protoss too. But against Terran, they just have too many answers. Vikings are really good against Carriers. I mean, even Marines in huge numbers just eat up Interceptors for lunch. Widow Mines destroy Interceptors quickly. There's just a lot of reasons not to make Carriers. You can do it! It's not recommended. And yeah, trying to attack up. No, this way, Maru says, get out. This is my neighborhood. This is this is where I live, thanks. We did actually see an incredible game between Harstam and Maru. Wherein Harstam went carriers against Maru and it totally worked. I mean, if you want a link to that replay, let me know. I'll put it in the description here or just reply to your comment directly. Because I do read every comment everybody ever makes on the channel. Ever. I don't get enough comments that I can't just read them all. So... Please feel free to leave a comment, leave a like button too, lets the algorithm know that things are cool here. And, I mean, subscribe. I've got StarCraft 2 content here five times a week. You can hit the join button down below and become a member, gain access to extra emoji for your comments, and uh, other exciting stuff. Check out that memberships. You know, if you want to support me directly here. I, some people like to support me on Patreon, which is cool. Patreon.com slash Falcon Paladin. Other people don't trust Patreon, they kind of hate it. They'd rather support on YouTube directly because they're here already, and I totally get that. So this is a little High Templar Express play here. We're High Templar in a Warp Prism. Uh, you can't EMP them when they're in there, but the trick is if you lose the Warp Prism, then the High Templar also die. So you have to be extremely careful with this thing. Both players just doing a bit of a dance. I mean, they're macroing up. We're maxed out. They're starting to build up some banks. It is a Dark Shrine on the way from Creator. So maybe I was just seeing the future of Dark Templar in this match. Which, you know, that's not much of a, a seeing the future move. Nice blink. Beautiful blink away from that Widow Mine hit. Oh! Feedbacks on the ghosts! And then a storm goes down there too. Beautiful play there. Feedbacking those ghosts is such a fantastic maneuver. It's a lot of Marine Marauder though, and counting on Disruptor shots to hit against somebody like Maru is just... It's a little too risky for me. I don't like it. I... It's almost like it's better to be used as a zoning tool to make sure the Terran has to back up and split than it is that you're actually going to get any damage against Maru when he's got this composition, right? And Disruptor hits not as good, I would say, as Colossus. But the good news is that Colossus are vulnerable to Vikings and Disruptors are not. So that's kind of a good deal. Nukes? Ah, we're getting nuke play from Maru here. We don't deserve nukes. Do we deserve nukes? I suppose maybe we deserve nukes. Maybe we have been good boys and girls and uh, non binaries this year. A oh, couple of Marines wander in, trying to take down a High Templar. No shield batteries and cannon supporting that. Everybody, That was a suicide mission, if ever I have seen one. But yeah, nukes, DT Blinks coming in. We are working on carriers. Well, hey! Look how dumb I am. We're getting Tectonic Destabilizers, which is the toughest upgrade, but also we don't have any of those yet. It's only Carriers. Dude, Creator's going Carriers and Mara's going Nukes? All right. Cannot say no to that one. Wouldn't mind connected on something somewhere. And we're just nuking a base. We're just walking directly into range of an entire base. We're going to nuke it. These probes are no. 
No, 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 no. Okay, he keeps him out. He knows the dot is here. So, all right. A pylon dies. I think that's it, right? Yeah, one kill on a pylon, reducing the shields on a couple other buildings here, but overall. And DC is going to make sure this ghost dies. Ready? That's right, ghost. You let us know you died with a loud death cry. That's what you're here for. That's what you're good at. Another nuke. Ooh, I love this nuke attempt, but that ghost is also dead. Maybe. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thought that Nova was going to take it down. Nope. Had to use a stalker for that action. This ghost. All right. This ghost comes around to a corner, throws down a nuke. Once again, it's in the same place. So, yeah, you just pull the probes maybe a little prematurely. It's like you're going to try to kill that ghost. So, flanks around the outside here, and that nuke's going to land. Hey! Big time nuke. I mean, it doesn't do anything at all. Minimal damage to this Nexus. Uh, yeah, nothing incredible there. One kill on that ghost. Ooh, gets an observer. And escapes out of there, too. Another base coming in. I mean, this is... What I love about Glittering Hashes is, is there's a ton of places to expand. It's like Hardwire. You get great macro games on this map. This is exactly what this is. Another nuke coming in. Creator sees the dot, pulls the probes. This nuke's going to do a little bit more damage, taking out a cannon and a pylon. So you get five kills on this ghost. Maybe a couple more probes died, but he out now. Never say die. Which is an interesting... Like, it should be a battle, a battle cry, a rallying cry, right? Never say die. But then you, like... As you're dying, you say never say die. It's an interesting choice is all I'm saying. I personally wouldn't roll for it. Another nuke attempt. Same location as the previous two. And once again, no shot of it landing. Because creator's on top of this. Oh, this position for a nuke is cheeky. Ah, got spotted. And once again, got deaded. Woof, Maru. Making two more nukes at a time. He's going to try to scorch Earth his way to victory here. It's worked against Zerg players before. I can't say I've ever seen it work against a Protoss before. But, you know, that's what I love about StarCraft. We see new stuff attempted all the time. And not that this is a new thing to try to go this many nukes against a Protoss, but it's traditionally been very much something we've seen done against Zerg players. Nuking the edge of their creep, pushing the creep back and back and back, nuking things like spores and spines. They can't really run away as easily, and maybe even catching a huge group of Broodlords with a nuke. Definitely been more of a TVZ spell. I guess nukes are nuke spells or units or... These are the questions for the sages of our age. I don't know the answer. Our Viking count is heavy, man. That's because we've got carriers. Remember what we talked about earlier? What's good against carriers? Well, Vikings are, that's for sure. You really wants to nuke this base. I think he's going to get it. Ah, oh, he's going to get this time. The probe. No. Ten probes down. That is the strategy of Scorched Earth. As there's an engagement up this way that the Terran is winning. Marauders going down. Uh, trying to fight against these Colossus Marauders. I do support that plan. Marauders trade extremely well versus Colossus. Another nuke up. So the strategy of Scorched Earth is you nuke so much that your opponent can't possibly catch them all. Maybe they, you know, they'll catch 90% of them, but that leaves a full 10% that are connecting, and this is it. There you go. Another nuke attempt. I'm just, I think this one's going to land too. Creator's just like, I can't stay on top. This is a weird nuke location. Dude, this is going to nuke down this Nexus, though. This is insane. Income tab has been pretty darn easy. We're wandering... If that was a DT that killed that tank, that's pretty good stuff, I guess. How many ghosts have died today? 13 ghosts have died today. And he's got a current army of six, which is pretty nice. He also has two nukes ready to go after this one. Three now. DT blink can close so fast. This little observer double DT hit squad is awesome. It is crazy good against this DT stuff. So more carriers coming in. I mean, got 10 of them. He's getting upgrades for him and everything, too. Morrow knows they're here, obviously. He's got the Viking count for it. I mean, this is a split the map in half. Hopefully make good trades and, and the, maybe try to win the big clash that's coming here soon.
Gonna double, is this a double nuke plate? It is a double nuke plate. And the hit squad says no, not happening. And the DTs, oh, they blink out their observer dies. So that's, oh my gosh, he wants this Nexus so bad, but the carriers are and Colossus are on rampage in the middle of the map here. Dealing with some missile turrets, which are a great answer to carriers too. And this Nexus is gonna die. Creator is abandoning it. <laughs> Double Nukasaurus there. Morrow deserves to win this game for style points only. Style points alone in this game. He's expanding bottom right. I mean, mentioning expansions at this map, at this stage of the game, is just like, sure. There are a hundred expansions for each player, right? I mean, Morrow's got one, two, three, four, five, six. He's working on seven. He's got other available ones here, too. It's just a lot of income potential here for both players. Colossus counter is only two to 11 carriers. Mass Ghost taking down a Disruptor? I mean, they don't do a ton of damage, but if you stack them up like that, it's going to be a good time. This Colossus, just he's out. This one, too, man. I think you're just freeing up supply for Tempest at this point. Yeah, Tempest are on the way. So this... Oh man, these nukes, though. Nuke Fest 2022. And a lot of probes are dead this time. woo -hoo -hoo! All right. Dude, Mars going to win this thing through Nukathon. 31 probes have died here. I'm not sure that Creator matters. Like, he doesn't care that much about that, right? He'd rather have army at this stage of the game anyway. Liberator setting up liberation zones against a very minimal ground army. There's like a couple stalkers on like a sentry there. Not great. But Vikings, you have enough Vikings to one-shot the carriers, right? It's like corruptors in a TV or a PVZ. Where do you have enough corruptors to one-shot a carrier? If you do, you're feeling pretty hot. If you don't, it's a little bit harder to deal with these guys, and creators on a rampage. I, I am tired of getting nuked by you. I'm gonna make you feel the pain for more traditional attack methods. Straight up attack methods, and now I'm getting nuked into places at once. Then maybe this was not the greatest plan of all time. So he's trying to sit around the edges here, but I mean, this nuke's gonna land. And this nuke's gonna land. All right, all right. Disruptor hits. Taking big thought. Planetary down. All right, finally, one of Maru's bases died. How many Nexuses have gone down today for creator? One. All right, fair, but how many probes have died? A lot. And getting all of these nukes is going to be quite an interesting challenge. <laughs> 19 SEVs have died recently. 30 SEVs total, 41 probes. And again, other players super interested in replacing those workers. Having 50 workers at this stage is fine. Man, enough Vikings to take down that Tempest easily. Creator still trying to get some extra push here. EMP is getting tossed down. The ghosts need to get out when the actual engagement begins, though. Nice storm! Beautiful storm on a couple of those ghosts. A bunch of them do manage to escape, though. And Creator says, you want to run right? I'm going to go left. I'm going to take down your turrets. Your Liberator is going to die easily. Beautiful storm on those Vikings. And then the Interceptor try to finish them off once they're that wounded and bruised here. Marauders to deal with the Disruptors. I like that both players have the correct answer to what the other player is doing. 12 o'clock base could definitely die. How many carriers have gone down today? Five have already died. There are six here. Dude, a nuke connecting there would be insane, but no, the ghost goes down. Le ghost is dead. Oh, uh, this is working pretty well from Creator. He's taking down some of these extra orbitals that Mars turn up for extra income purposes. I mean, the mule count is gonna be a lot lower on some of these bases in the future now and i mean these orbitals could go down here too it's 188 wow dude creators up big time here i didn't realize how much of a bank he had four thousand and five thousand gas four thousand minerals five thousand gas maro has no bank at all and is only at 150 supply he can't remax here he's building vikings and marines and ghosts but i don't think he can remax i think this is creator realizing wait a second can i just win this thing Defensive nukes on his own territory. EMP is getting tossed down on these Archons is so nice. 
It is so very nice. Where is the ghost? Oh my gosh, he can't see the ghost. So the Nanook's gonna land and take some HP, take some shields off these Tempests, but that's it. Viking count getting whittled down. Viking count whittling down the Tempest carrier numbers here too, though. This is a great match. I think Creator has it, though. We're at 24 minutes into this thing. The Nukathon strategy of Maru does not seem to have worked for him. I mean, he's making more Marines and Vikings desperately, but anytime there's a giant Protoss ball on your front door, it's just, I don't care what race you are. If your Protoss Terran or a giant Protoss ball is parked on your front door, getting them off your front door and your front lawn is going to be extremely challenging and annoying, if nothing else. So yeah, Orbital's getting knocked down all over the place here. Army values 151 to 130. Maru, he's spending his money. Creator's allowing Maru a little bit of room to remax here. He doesn't have a ton of income available for that, but he's got enough great. Beautiful storm. Beautiful split for Maru, though. And yeah, Creator, he's mining. And Maru's got these outer bases pretty happy, too. I mean, Maru, I think he'd rather be fighting here than be fighting over on this right side where he's got all that new sources of income that he needs to keep alive. So Creator may be making a bit of a mistake attacking up the middle here rather than going down to that right side section of the map. There's a bunch of stalkers wandering into death zone. Thanks for asking. I think Crater just wants to put the hammer down. It's just like, look, I know I can go after your outer bases, but there's a million turrets there for one. And for two, if I can just get on top of your production, you're going to die. But that, nope. Crater abandoning that plan, it would seem. He's going to go now along the right side of the map, or maybe retreating back to his own safe positions here. Income now creeping down into Creator's favor as he's killed a bunch of SCVs here, too, and able to expand a couple extra places, too, now that he has kept Maru on the other side of the map and on the defensive for so long. Some stalkers are blinking away. They don't want to die necessarily here. Another Oracle coming in, another Disruptor on the way here, too. You know, I really did think that was it, but Maru's done an amazing job remaxing out. Uh, that's the power of Terran. If they're not dead, they're not dead, ladies and gentlemen. Little DT Stalker Ball going to take down a planetary. They're not going to be able to do it thanks to the power of repair. And Maru's army responding to this with judicious, uh, judicious amounts of force. Judis, judicious? That's the word. I speak English. I was raised speaking English. I know how to say words. I majored in communications at university. Mothership coming in from creator. Love that play a lot. And just Vikings, man. It's got a lot of Vikings. By that I mean 16, with two more on the way. Got air weapons? Yeah, air weapons, air armor, ground armor, ground weapons. Same level of upgrades here from Creator. A silence falls over the masses. I mean, we look at the bank here. Creator still has 5,000 minerals and 3,000 gas. Tomorrow's 700 minerals and 200 gas. So in case of a huge engagement where both players lose massive amounts of their army, yeah, Creator's going to be able to rebuild a lot faster. He's got a DT up in here killing stuff. Well, this nuke's going to land, and goodbye, cannons. Mm, I do love the nuke animation in StarCraft 2. It's pretty fun in Brood War, but the StarCraft 2 nuke animation is just way more satisfying to me. If you're one of those few people on Earth who watch both StarCraft 2 and Brewdor, <laughs> there's not a lot of us. There are a few. I have seen people leaving comments to that effect. And I mean, obviously, Tastosis, Tasteless and Artosis are both you StarCraft 2 and Brewdor fans. So, like, come on. Be like them. Love all StarCraft. All StarCraft is good StarCraft. It's like that uh, Road to El Dorado meme where it's both. 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 Wow, Crater trying to expand into what is, I think, technically... Well, I think it's his side of the map, but that's going to die. Uh, stalkers harassing SCVs a tiny bit down this way. Are we to the point where we want to save SCVs? I don't know. Ah, big engagement here, though. Marine count. Remember what I said about Marines being pretty good against interceptors like this? Yes, very good. Vikings firing on in as well. Beautiful. We we're replacing army losses with Tempests. 
Stalker's got six kills. I'd say he's lived out a good life because he dead. He is paid for himself for sure. More disruptors. Great storm on the ramp. Another beautiful storm on the ramp. The medevac count is four. With three more on the way. Have we not been making medevacs today? No, we've lost zero medevacs today. Insane. Insane by Maru. Alright, so Mothership providing the cloak we talked about. And I, you know what? I was saying I thought Maru was dead, but once again, Terran is not dead until they are dead, especially when it comes to Maru. Man, Raider trying to re-expand up here. No! Not allowed. A few more probes die. Both players have been losing workers here and there. I see this. Ah, uh, is this the old warp in 17 zealots into your opponent's main move? The Marines trying to turn down so they can't kill the warp prism, though. The warp prism is down to 2 HP, so that's not great. Tempest, long distance firing on again. One of the newer sources of income here from Maru. On the other side of Mar uh, Marauder attacking this base of creators, which has died to nukes at his back now, though. Tempest sniping a planetary? I kind of love this. It's almost like Tempest harassment. You remember Tempest harass? Remember when they made Tempest faster with better acceleration? Oh, and now he's going to do... Oh, with the DT warp and going against... Oh, yeah. Well, the Engineering Bay. Mostly the Ghost Academies, though. I like that a lot. Maru's actually... I think he just hit the gas button. He's going, ladies and gentlemen. He can't withstand any of this. He's tired of the DT harassment. He's going to kill all of Creator's bases. He's going base race. Or at the very least, base trade here at 31 minutes. Insane situation. So, Ghost Academy 1 goes down. Ghost Academy 2 is a lie, which is good, Terran. Hands... You might get more nukes yet. There are none in, whatever, in inventory. But coming up the right side, Crater, these newer sources of income all dying. But guess what? Same story, other side of the map. All of Crater's newer sources of income are going down too. So income's going to be real bad for both players pretty soon. But Crater has the advantage because, ta-da, he's got the bigger bank. He's producing carriers, more disruptors. He knows he's losing nexuses. This one is worthless anyway. It's not a huge deal. Maru losing that planetary would probably be bad too. And he's going to force an engagement here. Ah, oh, Disruptor does make a connection. Remember what I said about making a Disruptor connection against Maru? How it's virtually impossible. Guess what? That was one. It's kind of like nukes. You send enough nukes out. Some are going to land. You send enough disruption shots out. Some are going to land. Purification Nova shots are going to land. Dude, Maru's got this base. And guess what? Crater has this base. This is their income right now. It is not great for either of them. All these outer lying bases are dead. Maru's trying to rebuild in the top left, which would be cool. Crater trying to expand to the exact same opposite corner. They're both kind of mirroring each other here, aren't they? I like it. I like it a lot. Both these players fighting hard. Scans against DTs always, friends. Forcing an engagement here just a little bit. I don't know if there is enough carrier. Nope! Not enough carrier to stand up against this many Marines and Vikings. This Rupert gets a decent hit there, but bottom rate base is dead. Dude, is Maru going to do this thing? With his Marines and his Medivacs and his Marauders. Top left base, finishing for Maru, where that's an extremely important location for him. Still actually mining from the 6 o'clock here as creator. That is... And technically up here at the 12 o'clock for Maru, too, so whatever. Maybe those bases have extra minerals. I don't actually know. That'd be very strange. So yeah, Creator mined out his center base here. Maru has not mined out his center base. So in comes swing back up into Maru's favor here. Uh, and then pokes that back down into Creator's side. Again, killing all of those all of those orbitals up here was really nice for Creator. To slow down the mineral income of Maru here into this stage of the game. Maru. Forcing a cancel on another Nexus here. Army value is 141 and 162. Crater has a lead, but a lot of his army is in stuff that kind of sucks against Marines. And Vikings, which that is largely what this army is. It's 18 Vikings, 32 Marines, 8 Ghosts, 16 Marauders, and like some Medivacs. Dude, does this game get an epic tag? I kind of feel like this game gets an epic tag. We're trying to mine out the entire map of Glittering Ashes. It's been very back and forth. Very up and down here. We're at the 35-minute mark, and I don't know that we're anywhere near done yet. 
This is what we're talking about when it comes to StarCraft. This is why we watch right here. Because it's beautiful. It's beautimous. It's exactly what we love to see. A zealot attack amongst some of these SCVs. Gonna run into some ghosts. Not not working out for you, zealot friend. I don't know. Is creator tech switching into stuff other than Tempest and Carriers? Am I wrong to say you should do that? He's rebuilding the Nexus at the high ground position for the second time today. And this top left base is rolling for Morrow. I feel like Creator doesn't know it's there. He would maybe try to send some Blink DTs over there and take it down if he did. Of course, he doesn't have any DTs, so that might explain why he hasn't done it. Revelation's getting tossed down. Yeah, this is PVT in a nutshell. I mean, this is one of the longer PVTs I've ever cast. It's hard to find a PVT that goes past 20 minutes these days. Just for whatever reason, the matchup is very interested in getting done sooner. So this is great. This is a treat for PBT fans. 35 minutes on this one. A Void Ray in production. Interesting choice. I mean, it's definitely... The Marines and the Vikings are still very good against Void Rays too. Ah, look who found it. Look who found the base up here. He's throwing down a stasis. So the reinforcements coming up here are going to be slowed down, maybe. Ah, <laughs> Stalker corpse flies off the edge. I always love the death animation where units die and then fly off the edge into the abyss. One of my favorite things. So kind of Tempest heavy enough to snipe off... Oh, some of those Vikings. Oh, Planetary Fortress gets obliterated there too. But Maru says, you can't stand against these Marines. You don't have enough splash damage to do it. Archons are getting killed all over the place here too. Tempest forced to pull back a little bit, sniping some of the Liberators. The Marauders can't do anything about the Sky Toss stuff, but the Vikings definitely can, and the Creator's army is gone. I mean, by that I mean he still has 100 supply, but his bank is toast as well. Under 1,000 minerals. Morrow's also under 1,000 minerals. This is crazy. I mean, Creator needs a new source of income. He's got this, which is great. He needs to bring some more probes over. I guess. Is he oversaturated anywhere that he can do that? Not really. Somehow, he's got random individual patches hanging out that he's mining from in bases that I feel like should have been dead for a while. Crater says, I don't... I'm trying to kite here, but gosh, your army is so strong against my mass tempest. Dude, I think Maru's gonna do this thing. Maru's up 132 to 91 army supply. Maru was on the ropes. On the ropes. He was backed up all the way here. And he held on and he held on and he held on. And Creator gave him a chance to remax. And now I think that's it. This is it for Creator's income. He's got scattered probes mining elsewhere. But oh, there's a beautiful storms though. Whoa, 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 Are we out of storms? I think we're out of storms. And very injured Marines with 3-3 are still very deadly against Stalkers and War Prisms and Tempests. This is exactly what I'm talking about here. And that's your GG. Maru comes out on top in 38 minutes and 5 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> what I say about Marines? Little tiny gods of death when they have 3-3, man. Uh, this giant carrier Tempest army? Nah, Marines can handle it. Marine DPS is sick against carriers and Tempest, especially six. That's a 40 kill ghost. 16 kill ghost. Yeah, ghost doing a lot of work, but absolutely a bloodbath. Resources lost are 80,000 to 80,000. That is a tight game. I'm going to give this an epic tag. I am. It is too good. We had a bajillion nukes. <laughs> we had carriers used. I, I mean, Tempest play. So many bases died. Four command centers, five planetaries. And nine orbitals went down for Morrow, and he won this game. He killed seven Nexuses, but those numbers don't add up. He killed 100 probes, lost 82 SCVs. Oh, just did a better job. Just did a better job with the tech choices here. I think Creator going for that many Tempests and Carriers and sticking with it when it was obvious it was going to be Vikings and it was going to be Marines and Marauders and all that. It was just going to be problematic all the way down for the army of Creator, and he knew that. End of the game, he only had one Tempest, a Dark Templar, and a Stalker left. GG, man. That is not something you come back from. So just pfft, sick, sick PBT for your Monday. 
Man alive. Anyhow, I just think Crater, uh, composition choice, killed him. Morrow did a pretty good job killing outlying bases, reestablishing his bases, too, a little bit better than Crater did, I want to say. And that allowed him to have the money to have more money at the end of the game than Crater did, despite being down on the bank as massively as he was through the middle of the game. So, yeah, some early aggression from Mario gets held off very easily by Creator. And then the nukes start occurring all over the place. Counter harassment with Colossus doesn't do a whole lot. The nukes do make a couple hits, miss on a lot of them. Creator decides to go carriers. A bunch of bases die everywhere on both sides. And then when it comes down to the huge decisive decision, there's just not enough splash damage from Creator there. He just didn't have enough storms. He did, obviously, he weakened and bruised these marines. Look at these guys. They don't have any HP left. They're all in the reds and the deep oranges and stuff. So you did a lot of damage to them, but killing them so they can't actually tear apart your Tempest is kind of the key there. So GG. Well done, Maru. I mean, are we surprised by a Maru win ever? Not all that much, I would say. <laughs> All right, that was good stuff. Well done, indeed. And that's going to be it for me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe. If you like what you saw and what you heard today, you can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch. All at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. You take care of yourself.